There is a late poem of Herbert's called, in Polish, to Do Henryka Elsenberga Stulecie Jego Urodzin, to Henryk to Henrik Elsenberg on the centenary of his birth. Elsenberg was one of Herbert's great mentors and teachers, exemplars. And I think we could uh, reapply the conclusion to that poem to Herbert's own achievement. Niech pochwalone będą twoje księgi, szczupłe, promieniste, trwalsze od spiżu. Niech pochwalone będzie twoja kołyska. Praise be to your books, slim, radiant, more lasting than bronze. Praise be to your cradle. Please welcome Seamus Heaney. Well, it's my honour to be invited here this evening to be associated with the celebration of this great poet, universally acknowledged so, and to be associated with the sponsors of the event, with the Polish Embassy, with the Ireland Poland Society, and with the foundation of which I am patron. <laughs> but I also like to thank Cal for his welcome. Uh, Zbigniew Herbert is a poet of historical importance for the Polish nation, for the Polish tradition. He's a poet of exemplary ethical and artistic integrity in world literature in the 20th and 21st century. He's a poet whose work fulfills the, the classical expectation that great literature will delight and instruct. And he has a strong instructive element in him, which happily uh, combines with, with a delightful aspect. So I am very grateful to be able to salute this great embodiment of Polish excellence in the art of poetry. I'm also personally grateful for a chance to give something back to all that has been given to me by Poland. As Cahal said, the nurture of the poets and poetry for a start, the support, the personal support and friendship of writers and critics one of whom is here this evening, Yerji. Also, I'm honored to have been honored by the Polish Order of Merit. This is, this is rather like reading out your own <laughs> 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 pedigree. But even so, it's worth doing. <laughs> the Jagiellonian University, one of the great universities of Europe, and uh, they welcomed Muggins and degreed him up. So it's a great pleasure for that. The Polish Academy of Arts and Sciences has to be mentioned also, but also the friendship of Ambassador and Madame Chumulski. It's a delight to be here. Speaking of Herbert, I know there are Polish people here don't need to be told this, but I suspect there are a few Irish people who might welcome some little bit of information, just. Uh, Zbigniew Herbert is a poet with a noble profile in the uh, Polish tradition and, as I say, in world literature. He is a poet with a heroic sense of his calling as a poet, rarer than one might think in 20th and 21st century literary culture. He is happy to profile himself. In fact, he feels compelled to profile himself as a guardian of value, as a, an exemplar and a reminder of what is called for in the good life, in the, in the examined life of the individual and of the culture. He has an ethic of solidarity with the victims of history. His fidelity is to the values of those who stood against the powerful. He's a poet who thereby became a source of spiritual strength and by uh, extension, by extension, 
a source of political strength to the Polish people. A strength, a bastion of resistance indeed to the Soviet regime. But his meaning as a poet reaches far beyond Poland, beyond the political circumstances against which he strove and against which he defined himself. I'll just read a poem of his, a late poem, begin at the end, not a bad way. It's called, uh, I Gave My Word. And it's on page 521. <laughs> <laughs> and I commend this bargain book to you all. There's nothing slim about this one. <laughs> but uh, this is his collected poems. And you can open it anywhere. Herbert wanted it to be open to everybody, to the world. It's, he is constantly saying, I'm not really interested in poetry, fancy stuff. I am a poet who is interested in things, in the down-to-earth, in the actual. I'm a poet who is interested in telling the truth, in being faithful, in holding the line. And this is a late, late poem. As Berla. I gave my word. I was very young, and common sense told me not to give my word. I could easily say, I'll give it some thought. What's the big hurry? It's not a train timetable. I'll give my word after graduation, after military service, after I make a home. But time exploded. There was no before. There was no after. In the blinding present, you had to choose. And I gave my word. A word. A noose round my neck. The ultimate word. In the rare moments when everything is light and becomes transparent, I think to myself, my word. How I'd like to take my word back. It doesn't last for long. The world's axis screeches. People pass away, as do landscapes, coloured rings of time. But the word I gave is stuck in my throat. All that sudden time exploded. There was no before, there was no after. In the blinding present, you had to choose. Herbert, in a sense, had no young poet life. He was born in 1924 in the city of Lvov, and in 1939, that city, that part of the Poland was invaded by the Soviets and taken, and people moved, because if they didn't move, they were going to be moved. A lot of them were. Eventually, it was the Soviets were driven out, and the Nazis took over, and with their usual consequences for the Jews and others then. So <coughs> the war <coughs> the war is happens when he is what fifteen. And during the war he experiences all that desolation. Uh, he is uh, cornered and commits himself to the resistance. It's still not quite sure what he did, but for sure he was involved with <coughs> the partisans, I suppose, who were related to the home army. And he uh, moved around, but he was also witness and lived through that time of massacre of the Warsaw ghetto, of the Warsaw uprising, and so on. Anyway, this poem, I gave my word, has a typical feeling for him of, of, have, of him being bound to a comitatus.